CLL or chronic lymphocytic leukemia is the most common type of chronic leukemia in adults in the United States and the western part of the world. It's a type of chronic blood cancer that affects a type of immune cell called a lymphocyte. And um, oftentimes patients are diagnosed because of routine blood work that looks a little bit off. Other times people can be diagnosed because they develop an enlarged lymph node, which sometimes is found incidentally. CLL and SLL, which is small lymphocytic lymphoma, are really the same disease and they're describing the areas of the body where patients have involvement. So CLL is more indicative of blood involvement or bone marrow involvement, where SLL denotes a type of disease that has lymph node or spleen involvement. But it's really all the same exact disease process. So a lot of times when patients are diagnosed with CLL, um, they'll be asymptomatic and really, again, this is something that's detected almost incidentally. A blood work uh, test that comes back abnormal or an incidental imaging finding that we stumble across. Other times patients will develop symptoms related to either abnormalities in the blood or in lymph nodes. So sometimes increasing fatigue can be associated with anemia that CLL can cause. Um, or, for example, um, patients that have lymph node involvement might notice a, a growing lymph node or an area of swelling in the body, but probably the most common presentation is actually to be asymptomatic and to have this picked up. CLL is most commonly diagnosed based on a blood test that's done um, from the peripheral blood, so something called flow cytometry, which is a very, very sensitive analysis of the immune cells of the blood that's able to characterize abnormal lymphocytes. Um, that test is typically ordered after a more basic blood test called a CBC would show an elevated lymphocyte count. Um, other times, again, patients that have lymph node involvement may have an enlarged lymph node seen on an imaging study and then a subsequent biopsy would confirm the diagnosis of SLL or CLL. CLL and SLL are the same exact disease process. Um, some patients will have purely blood involvement of their disease where other patients will have lymph node involvement and other patients will have both, but it's the same exact disease process. So I really think of CLL and SLL as being the same disease. The main frontline treatment options for patients with CLL fall into two different categories. Um, one category is what's called continuous treatment with a type of medication called a BTK inhibitor. These are oral pills that patients start, and as long as they're working, patients can stay on them indefinitely, um, oftentimes many, many years. Um, so there are different varieties of BTK inhibitors that are available. Some agents include ibrutinib, acalabrutinib, xanabrutinib. Um, the other approach to initial treatment uses a combination of two different medicines together, a pill called venetoclax, which is a BCL2 inhibitor, um, that's used in combination with a monoclonal antibody that targets something called CD20 on the surface of CLL cells. That medication is called obinutuzumab. Obinutuzumab, the antibody is given intravenously and it is continued for six months. Venetoclax, the pill that's used in, in that combination, is continued most commonly for up to 12 months. So the two medications are used together for a fixed duration of, of 12 months for most patients. Patients with relapse refractory CLL have an increasing number of options um, that can be very effective. Patients who are treated in the frontline setting with a BTK inhibitor can often then be treated in the second line setting with the combination of the BCL2 inhibitor venetoclax, most commonly used with the anti-CD20 antibody rituximab. Um, and for patients who were treated with venetoclax and uh, obinutuzumab in the frontline setting, they can then switch over to using a BTK inhibitor if they haven't been previously exposed. Um, patients who have progressed after being treated with a BTK inhibitor now have access to a different type of BTK inhibitor, most commonly a medicine called pirtobrutinib, 
that was designed to be effective for patients who have developed resistance to other types of BTK inhibitors. Um, subsequent to that, uh, it's an exciting time for CLL treatment. CAR-T, which is an option that's been around for many years for patients with other lymphomas, is now FDA approved in CLL. Um, we also have several exciting agents that are being used in clinical studies, including BTK degraders and bispecific antibodies. Um, so a lot of promise and a lot of new agents in development. number of really promising new approaches for CLL that are coming through clinical trials are in, and are in development, many of which have been used in other types of lymphomas, um, and some of which are more unique to CLL specifically. An agent that we have a lot of enthusiasm about is a molecule called a BTK degrader. So this is another type of medicine that can be effective for patients who've previously received a BTK inhibitor and developed resistance. It targets that same BTK receptor inside of CLL cells, but is able to overcome resistance. Um, and so early studies are looking quite promising, but it is still something that's being developed. Uh, in addition, there are a number of studies that are evaluating bispecific antibodies in CLL. This is a type of therapy that engages the body's own immune system to fight CLL and is very effective and is FDA approved in other types of lymphoma and we're also really eager and hopeful that it's going to become a meaningful treatment for CLL as well. There are always new studies that are being developed to combine agents that we are already using in CLL in novel ways and in different schedules and different um, doses, etc. So lots of things that are coming through that are very promising.